Welcome back to SnowRunner, y'all, and in this video, we're going to be checking out what I do believe is the largest front-end loader that has ever been released as a mod for SnowRunner. This thing is absolutely enormous. It's so enormous, in fact, that I decided not to run face cam in this video so that you guys could really get the overall sheer scale of this front end loader. It is absolutely massive. Now, this is a console friendly mod and I urge you to check your console's uh, particular mod browser because they're all a little bit different, but check your specific console's mod browser to see if this vehicle is there. Um, because again, it takes various amounts of time to be approved on different platforms. So it may already be there, it may not be there, but rest assured once again, it is console friendly. And if it is not on your console's mod browser, uh, it will be be there soon. So, without any further ado, let's uh, fire this thing up, get it into the garage, and see what kind of customization options it has, and then take it out and see what we can do with it. No, that first off, we'd have to climb the first ladder, and then the second set of stairs, and then get into the cabin. Now, I will also say, that's probably the biggest radiator fan I've ever, ever seen in my entire life. All right, let's start this thing. Oh, that's so sick. I, I wanted to go ahead and keep the camera on the rear of it for just a moment because I wanted to see if the radiator fan would come on. And I'm very happy that it does. That is very satisfying. Now, from the inside view, yo, what? Oh, that's so sick. They actually have your character's hands around the control sticks. That is amazing. Does the, does the tack move if you rev it? I can't tell. I can't actually see whether or not there's a needle there that's moving. Now, if we start to drive, you'll notice very quickly that it is articulated in the center. And that can be a little bit weird to get used to, especially if you like to drive it from the interior view. From third person, it's not that big of a deal. From first person, it can be a little bit weird. Now, it's very large in the garage. Oh my god. Now, as far as the engines go... You can run it with a selection of three different vanilla engines or three different Z2 engines. Now, the, the Z2 engines are going to be the overpowered options, but if you're like me and that doesn't bother you, you can go straight for those. But if it does bother you, you can always use the, uh, the standard vanilla engines. Now, we're going to try Z2 Engine 3 because on a test like this, where we're really stress testing one of these vehicles, I want to throw the maximum power capacity, like maximum power capability at it and see what it can really do. Now, gearboxes. We got Special, fine-tune, advanced, special, and multi-purpose. I usually like to go with the fine-tune because it gives you the widest selection of gear ranges. Now, suspension-wise, you've got active and you've got stock. Stock sits a little higher, but active seems like it's going to give you a little bit more adjustability. So I think what we might do is I might actually leave this one on, well, you know what? We'll go with active. The reason why we'll go with active is because I want to be able to see how much adjustment it has. Now, tires-wise, we have a interesting selection, actually. These are some vanilla tires. Then there's the, oh my god, Z2 protection chain. These, it says, are powerful tires with grip on all surfaces. So essentially, these will go everywhere and you'll never have to worry about it. And then these are a set of modified and recoded vanilla tires that have different um, different variables of interaction with the ground. So let's say this one, for example, um, Asphalt 1.0, like Substance 2.0, this one is 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, and this one is 757075. We're going to go with these, actually, the Z2 Giant Tire with 7570 and 75. Now, winch-wise, we're going to go with the Z2 uh, winch, and then, let's see, visuals, we've got side guards, which we can run if we want, but I'm not going to do them. Um, Front-wise, so we've got a couple of different attachments we can run. We can run the bucket, the log fork, and the bale grabber. Now, the bale grabber is going to be best used in the newest DLC, or at least newest DLC as of filming this video, where you actually have missions where you have to pick up and deliver hay bales. Now, we're not going to be using that one. Um, the log fork it actually really intrigues me because you can load a massive amount of logs into that. But I might actually... 
I might actually stick with the um, the bucket for now because I want to see what that can do. Now, let's see. Oh, we've got a, a decent selection of different wheels as well that you can go through. And really, I mean, the wheels are up to your own personal preference. Now, for the, uh, for the color options, you've got a massive selection. You can go with basically whatever color option or color combination you would like. Um, and that is entirely and totally up to you. I'm probably going to stick with a fairly close to standard, you know, fairly close to stock, like, you know, black and kind of, you know, darker yellow color. And then we are also going to throw beans into the cab and accessories wise, we'll throw, eh, we'll throw the pine forest air freshener in there. And then now we get to take this thing out for a bit of testing. Now, when I say a bit of testing, there is an element of that testing that I am very curious about. And that is, you know, normally you would think, well, we would put different types of cargo in there, no big deal. We're actually going to spawn in something a little bit different. When I say we're going to spawn in something a little bit different, we're going to spawn in a vehicle that uh, you would find throughout a couple of different maps. Now, let's see. What about, we could do a Chevrolet Apache, but that's not quite as interesting as where we could, ah, there we go, good old Don 71, yes, yes, all right, so let's fire you up, and I want to see with how much ease this thing picks up a Don 71, because I feel like it's going to have no issues at all picking it up, or rather scooping it up, you know, I miscalculated how tight this area is, I really, really did, now let's see, Suspension mode up. Oh, wow. That's a good bit of lift. Holy smokes. Now, let's see. Oh, that's not too bad. And then what controls the actual bucket? Because I'm trying to figure out what controls that actually is. Let's see. I'll tell you what. Let's turn immersive mode off because now I'm curious. I want to know. What oh, okay. And then, oh, it's left, left stick for tilt. Got it. That makes sense. Okay, that makes sense. I don't know why I forgot that, because that's pretty similar to a lot of the other loaders and forklifts in SnowRunner. Let's bring you forward just a little bit. And now we're going to scoop you up. Oh, God. It bounced. It actually legit bounced. All right. Now, let's see. I'm going to give you a bit of tilt. And then we're going to raise you up a bit. There we go. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. There's no way it's gonna... Okay, I was like, there's no way it's gonna pack. But, like, I've gotta at least see if packing this is a possibility. You know what I mean? There's no way that I would try this without checking to see if I could pack that in the bucket. I would totally pack it in the bucket. I'd be like, dude, why would you not pack it in the bucket? Now, let's see where we could drop this Don off. Because we have a couple of other tests to do. I also definitely want to see how fast we can go before the Don just gives up and falls out. We're actually, I mean, we're hauling pretty good. Uh, I'm surprised it hasn't fallen out yet. Go! Whoa! <laughs> we threw it! Oh my god, we threw it! What? <laughs> That's incredible! <laughs> oh my god, that is amazing. That's actually legitimately amazing. I had no idea it was gonna just fling it like that. Now, can we climb the hill? Probably. All-wheel drive always on. Diff lock always on. We also, actually, suspension up. And up you go. Come on, 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 come on. Uh, maybe. Oh, it's such a slow go. Let me go down to, like, the lowest possible gear ratio. It can't do it. It's holding. It's gripped up. It just can't do it. Okay, well, we tried. We, we tried very hard, and we gave it a really good effort. Um, we just have a very other, like, a very different problem now. We can't back it off of the hill. Backing it off of the hill has become the challenge at hand. I mean, it's not really, um... It's not really a grand scenario. Oh, back it up, back it up, back... Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, thank you. Thank you. And send it. Now, let's see. I wonder what the horn on this thing sounds like. Eh, that's fairly fitting. It's not terrible. Now, how fast is it in the mud? I mean, with all of these, you know, top-end upgrades on it, I would assume it would be pretty quick. And so far, I mean, we're kind of just sailing. What about the first mud lane when it gets a little bit deeper? 
It still does not care. Are any of these mud lanes even going to make it care? I doubt it. I genuinely... Oh my god. <laughs> I'm like, I genuinely doubt it. Wow, it doesn't even care about mud lane number two. What about, what about the pond? If anything's going to get it, the pond's going to get it. I mean, it's picking up some damage, but it didn't slow down. It stayed in second the whole way. What about this stuff? This, this is just a bog. It's a swamp. It still hasn't slowed down at all. I mean, it's just moving out. No issues whatsoever. I mean, it's moving a little bit slow. But, I mean, that's kind of to be expected, you know? Like, if, if you're not expecting it to move a little bit slow, I feel like you're kind of kidding yourself a little bit. But, like, most vehicles would get completely and totally stuck in there. Whereas this one is like, eh, I'm going to slow down a little bit, but it ain't going to stop me. So let's make our way across this rock field real quick. I know the rock field is kind of just like a whatever obstacle to this thing. And we're going to try the dips obstacle. The dips obstacle may be a bit weird, um, but the dips obstacle I don't think is going to slow it down all that much. No! Well, that went well. All right. Uh, we need a rescue vehicle. Thank you. Please and thank you. Fun Runner Max. Yep, Fun Runner Max will definitely be a good rescue vehicle for this. Yep. Over you go. Uh, excuse me. I got this because it was going to be fast. Now, do your do your job. Come on. Heavy tow and haul. Refresh. Yeah, now you're going to now we're going to pull you over. Oh my god, it's barely... Oh, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. And it's good, okay. Wow, that was the Fun Runner Max with, like, the maximum engine and freaking transmission, and it's still had a hard time pulling this thing over. This must be ridiculously heavy. Like, genuinely ridiculously heavy. Oh god. It's a little fumbly and bumbly and not exactly the best <laughs> the best rig for this. I mean, it'll fumble its way through it, but I don't think I would use it for this kind of terrain. It's not what it's built for, to be fair. But this type of test is all about taking a vehicle outside of its element, and I think we're doing exactly that right now. The wheelbase works fine, the tire size works fine, it just, oh, it launched a rock out from the back bumper and then the rock froze in the air because it's physics deactivated. I love when vehicles physics deactivate. All right, now before we get to the bridge jump, no, suspension back up. Thank you. All right, down. I need to lower the bucket just enough that I can see because uh, I, I can't see. There we, that, that's enough. I need to lower the bucket just enough that I can see because when we go down the bridge jump, we're obviously going to have to do it from inside the cab. And so if we have to do it from inside the cab in order to make our camera not glitch out, well, you know exactly what has to happen. Yeah, yeah that's right, barricade. Yeet yourself out of my way. Now, there's a lot of rain going on out here, too. For whatever reason, it really likes to rain on this testing grounds map. I really have no idea why. It, like, this game has always favored rain on the uh on the testing grounds map in my opinion like summer testing grounds it's like if you go to summer testing grounds nine out of ten times it's gonna rain all right bridge jump time heading into it already in fifth gear oh god do not hit the wall oh it, wow i love how I, the second i say do not hit the wall the bucket caught the wall all right let's try this one more time and <laughs> not mess it up at all I'm only going to be in first person for, like, a minute amount of time, because it's only going to be for the amount of time that I absolutely need to be there. Okay. Now. Easy. You know what? Just neutral. We'll get more speed out of it that way. All right. Here we go. Full set! Oh! Well, if we had the bucket higher, we would have been fine, but we buried the bucket in the ground, and that's what happens when you do that. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you guys next time.